I want to end this lecture by talking about some examples of computing the Galois group of a quartic polynomial. And this first example comes from the algebra qualifying exam from fall 2014, number five, and asks for you to determine the splitting field over Q of f of x equals x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. And then it asks, what is the degree of this splitting field over Q? So it doesn't explicitly ask this, but you could just say, like, what is the Galois group of this polynomial f of x? And OK, so there's a key observation. You, you can just jump into all of the stuff that we've been talking about uh, earlier in this lecture, but there's something about this example that makes it a little easier. The key observation is that x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 is a quadratic polynomial in x squared. So if you make a change of variable, y equals x squared, this polynomial becomes y squared plus y plus 1. And I know the roots of y squared plus y plus 1. The roots are y equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1, which is negative 3, over 2. So the roots of this polynomial x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 are values of x for which x squared equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 3 over 2. Uh, this is familiar, though, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of minus 3 over 2. These are the primitive third roots of unity. So you can think about them as e to the 2 pi i over 3 and e to the 4 pi i over 3. And I find this a little easier to think about because now if I'm looking for things that square to e to the 2 pi i over 3, and e to the 4 pi i over 3, they're easy to come up with. So what squares to e to the 2 pi i over 3? Well, one thing that squares to e to the 2 pi i over 3 is pi i over 3. And another thing that squares to, sorry, one thing that squares to e to the 4 pi i over 3 is e to the 2 pi i over 3. The other two take a little bit of thinking. If you take a e to the 4 pi i over 3, and you square that, you get e to the 8 pi i over 3, which is e to the 2 pi i over 3. So now we just need to find, we found two things that square to this. We need one more thing that squares to this. If you take e to the 5 pi over 3 and you square that, you get e to the 4 pi i over 3. So what are the roots of this f of x? e to the 2 pi over 3, e to the 4 pi i over 3, e to the pi i over 3, and e to the 5 pi i over 3. You can write all of these in terms of e to the 2 pi i a over 6. These are all sixth roots of unity. And now I want to back up and say, wait a minute. OK, so my quartic polynomial, the roots are all sixth roots of unity. That means that my quartic polynomial has to divide x to the 6th minus 1. But I don't have factor x to the 6th minus 1. I mean, you can factor this immediately as a product of phi d of x, where d divides 6, the product of the d cyclotomic polynomial for all d dividing 6. But you can also just write it as x cubed minus 1, x cubed plus 1, x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1, times x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. 1 and minus 1 are not roots of this polynomial f. But those four roots of this polynomial f are the roots of x squared plus x plus 1, that's the primitive third roots of unity, and x squared minus x plus 1, the roots here are the primitive six roots of unity. So what's the thing that's happening in this example is that this polynomial is reducible. But in order to tell that it was reducible, I think the easiest thing to do was actually understand what are the roots of this polynomial. And we can do that because it has a special property that it's a quadratic polynomial in x squared. OK, so where are we? We're supposed to compute the splitting field over q of this polynomial. All of the roots are sixth roots of unity. So all of the roots are contained in q adjoined zeta 6. But q adjoined zeta 6 is actually q adjoined square root of negative 3. I mean, these are the same field. Either one of these is correct. Uh, what is the Galois group of this polynomial? Well, we know the Galois group of Q adjoined zeta n over Q is isomorphic to Z mod n Z star, but Z mod 6 Z star is isomorphic to Z mod 2 Z. So either way you think about it, it's clear now that the Galois group is just Z mod 2 Z. Okay, so we started with a quartic polynomial. 
the natural thing to do is to get nervous and say, oh, I have to compute the resolvent cubic, and then I have to determine whether the resolvent cubic is reducible or irreducible. Uh, and then I need to like compute the discriminants and remember all of this stuff. But this problem is actually much, much simpler because it has this additional structure where you can write down all of the roots. Okay, let's think about another similar example. Algebra qualifying exam, fall 2019, number seven. It says compute the Galois group of f of x equals x to the fourth minus three x squared plus four over q. And here, same idea. This is a quadratic polynomial in y equals x squared. So what are the roots of y squared minus three y plus four? Well, y has to equal three plus or minus the square root of minus seven over two. So you need to find x squared equals these. For each of the plus and the minus, there's now two roots corresponding to that for x. You can write them down, but this whole thing is like actually a little bit tedious. What I would suggest is instead of thinking carefully about this particular example, why don't we just think much more generally about quartic polynomials that are of the form x to the fourth plus ax squared plus b? Is there something that we can do to deal with all of these quartic polynomials at the same time? So one question is, now we know the roots of this polynomial, is it clear that this polynomial is irreducible? Then if it is, we could compute the resolvent cubic, we could compute the discriminant to tell things about the resolvent cubic. But because of this special additional structure, we can skip all of that work and not actually go through the resolvent cubic to understand the Galois group of this polynomial. So I'm going to pause and erase, and I'm going to show you an exercise from Dummett and Foot that answers all of these kinds of questions at once. Let's talk about how to understand the Galois group of this special family of cortics all at once. So this is exercise 13 in section 14.6. I definitely recommend that you do this exercise. I think it's good practice for the types of cortic polynomials that you might see on an exam. Let f of x be x to the fourth plus ax squared plus b in z bracket x, so a and b are in z. So this cortic has the additional structure that it's actually a quadratic polynomial in x squared, which allows us to write down all of the roots of this polynomial. So let's say that those roots are plus or minus y and plus, sorry, plus or minus alpha and plus or minus beta. So those are the roots of f of x. First, prove that f of x is irreducible if and only if alpha squared and alpha plus or minus beta are not rational. Okay, so that's the first part. When is this polynomial irreducible? Now let's suppose that this polynomial is irreducible. What is its Galois group? Well, this breaks up into cases. The Galois group of F is isomorphic to Z mod 2Z cross Z mod 2Z, if and only if B is a square in Q. And that is equivalent to alpha times beta being rational, where here are alpha and beta. The Galois group could be isomorphic to Z mod 4Z. And this happens if and only if B times A squared minus 4B is a square in Q. And that is equivalent to saying that the field generated over Q by alpha times beta is the same as the field generated over Q by alpha squared. And the third possibility is that the Galois group of F is isomorphic to D8. And this occurs if and only if B and b times a squared minus 4b are both not squares in q. And this is equivalent to the field generated, or sorry, the element alpha times beta not being in the field generated over q by alpha squared. So OK, you may feel like there's a possibility missing here. b could be a square in q. b times a squared minus 4b could be a square in q. And the last one is when they're both not squares in q. What about when they both are squares in q? Well, remember that for this part of the question, we've already assumed that f of x is irreducible. So what happens when both of these are squares in Q? How does that relate to part A? 
So let me just say that for an additional example, you can see exercise 14 in section 14.6. It's an application of exactly this problem. So what we're seeing in this video is that relatively recently, there have been a couple of examples that have shown up on qualifying exams that are of the form compute the Galois group of this quartic polynomial. But in those cases, this quartic polynomial has this additional structure where you can give a simpler answer. If I'm being really honest, I cannot think of one example of uh, an algebra qualifying exam problem that has come up recently where you actually need to compute the resolvent cubic of some quartic polynomial. And part of the reason for that is that, okay, I know that given a polynomial, f of x equals a or f of x equals x to the fourth plus ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, I can first make this change of variable to find a polynomial g of y where the x cube where the cube coefficient is zero that has the same Galois group. And then I know that I can write down the resolvent cubic of that polynomial G in terms of the coefficients of that polynomial G. But I don't actually expect you to remember on an exam the expression for the coefficients of the resolvent cubic. You should know what the resolvent cubic is and what its roots are in terms of the roots of the cortic. But things like formulas for the discriminant of a cortic polynomial and uh, formulas for the coefficients of the resolvent cubic, the, I don't expect you to memorize these complicated formulas.